Hi, I'm Ron Clark. Today, I want to introduce you to the magic mirror. Now, I don't show other people uh, my consecrated magical tools that are just for my personal use, period, forever. Um, this tool, though, is different. It has been deconsecrated. I don't use it anymore. It's not a tool that is valuable to me in my practice. So it has been deconsecrated, and uh, so I do feel comfortable in showing it to you. This is the first tool that I constructed out of cardboard back in the early 90s. So it has a nice uh, a silk cover, which I sewed myself on a little machine. <clears throat> so now we're going to be kind of hunched down here because this is something I have to show you close up. This is the container for the magic mirror. Now, this mirror I actually inherited from a fellow who was my first initiator um, back in the early 90s. Um, actually, back in the late 80s, I inherited it. And it is a, a concave obsidian, uh, black obsidian um, mirror inside this box, which, as I said, is the first thing that I made with cardboard. I, it fucking amazes me now that I was able to make this. Uh, it is one of the most complicated um, pieces I have made. So... The magic mirror itself is, as I said, a concave piece of, uh, a round piece of obsidian sit on a, uh, a wooden frame that is at the heart of this. Now, for me, um, being a Bardenist, um, I think of a, bla uh, a, a magic mirror and I think of fluid condensers of one form or another. This is a big, huge fluid condenser, uh, but these are solid fluid condensers. Fluid condensers and elemental condensers all are in here, and I'll show you as we go. First, though, uh, let me open, well, let me show you sort of a hint of what the, the box looks like. Um, and I'll open it, and then I'm going to do a little change with the camera so I can give you an overhead view of it for a little while. Then I'll be back to this view. So, to open this, we start, we pull this up, and it has a little bit of uh, felt in here to act as a hinge. And we pull this one up, and this one. sequence is not important here. The only thing is this is the first one to come up. This one. Come on. Uh-huh. And this one. It hasn't been opened in quite a while, so it's a little stiff. Uh, these uh, bits of felt have to expand a little bit for it to truly open up and stay. So, I'm going to switch camera now and give you an overhead view, which is the primo view. So, this is the magic mirror from the top. And this in here is the concave obsidian mirror. Strewn on the top of the mirror here are some, it's a fluid condenser, these are uh, dust from clear quartz crystals. As I work with them, I generate a certain amount of dust. There is also um, a woven gold and, oh, if I can get it out here, a bit of woven gold 
braided rather, gold, silver, and copper wire. That is, I used to, and the first gate makers that I created were big discs, and they would hang from the wall on um, this braided um, wire of copper, gold, and silver. So, there are also a set of B, a set of pearls around the edge. So these are all fluid condensers, solid fluid condensers. There are also little rounded stones from a creek um, set in around the edge of the mirror. So it has, it's supposed to look like a lotus, basically, an open lotus. And it does. Okay, I'm going to go back down with the camera again. Okay, here we are back to the regular view. Now, I'm going to close up the top since you, you've seen the magic mirror. Um, it is a magic mirror, standard magic mirror with all these fluid condensers around it and on top of it, etc. Underneath the mirror itself, there is an old tarot card um, from a feminist tarot. It's a round card, and it is, uh, let's see, it's the Ten of Cups, I think. Um, it's a big feast. Um, so, so, we'll close this up. I use this um, like you would any magic mirror, okay? Okay, now we close the top. Now we come to the drawers. These are all drawers. And they hold fluid condensers of, of my type. <laughs> These are very me. These are, in every drawer, is my collection of Native American arrowheads that have been gifted to me by various creeks and roads and things like that. This one, for example, came from a, a lane uh, drive out in the country and various crystals. So, and my entire collection of chipped obsidian pieces is in this box. Mm, this was beauty. So, these are fluid condensers. Now, I, I like using chipped pieces in here because the chipped pieces are all about intention. There's so much intention goes into the actual chipping of these pieces. Many of them are this red chert, which in the area where I live is very common for uh, chipped pieces like this and little special crystals that I've come to over the years. And the obsidian is just uh, astounding, beautiful. Um, this is one of the very first pieces that was ever given to me by the creek. So, yes, there's intention in these, um, which is a very important, for me at least, in my work with Magic Mirror, um, very important um, intention. So there's our, uh, a fluidic condenser that is focused around intention. Ah, some very beautiful pieces in here. I haven't seen these in quite a while, so it's really nice to see them all. Uh, the obsidian is just, uh, I really love obsidian. Now, obsidian it has the intention, but it also is very absorptive. It absorbs energy. Beautiful pieces. Um, yeah. And a little pentagram that I used to wear was made on the solstice of... I forget what year, 1992, 91, something like that, 90. <clears throat> Again, 
these, these are all about intention. Uh, intention that, uh, that comes from my life experiences um, with these stones, with the, the um, pentacle, you know, little things of great significance to me. Magical tools need to be personal. They need to be the ultimate and personal um, for them to truly be functional. These are early pieces that I found. Mm. They're really significant. Uh, this is a, a little totem stone that I kept with me for years and years and years. It was always in my pocket. So, the intention is, is deep. Uh, it's not a um, superficial intention um, involved here. It's all very pointed. Ah, here it is. This is a healing stone. The first healing stone that came to my pocket way back in the um, early 80s, mid 80s. It, it was in my pocket for years and years. There's a lot of healing with that little stone. So, this is the magic mirror. My pretty tool. <clears throat> And it lives underneath silk. Now we use silk to cover uh, magical tools, especially consecrated magical tools, because it, it acts as an insulation. Um, the, the fiber of silk is such that it's the, the longest fiber. Um, so it energy hits the silk fiber and dissipate you know it, it spreads it doesn't go through the silk it sort of bounces off or or sticks around on the outside <clears throat> so it's very good insulator um, yeah that's about all I have to say about friend magic mirror I hope you've enjoyed till next week bye bye